Those has been significant, has significantly reduced wafer cost and increased the potential for high yield and improved product quality. New 300 millimeter facilities built and planned by TSMC will each have a capacity exceeding 100K 300 millimeter wafers per month and 40 hour version month. Such bigger fabs will not only have inherent cost advantages over smaller facilities, but will also help improve cost, product quality, accelerate yield learning and time to volume, and minimize costly product requalification. In the past few years, TSMC has invested several hundred million dollars in information technology and automation systems, which have resulted in improved yield, shorter production cycle time, and overall lower manufacturing costs. Going forward, companies also need to further expand collaboration with the equipment suppliers to ensure a competitive cost structure for new generations of process technology. Next slide, please. Finally, farmers need to be able to continue to invest in R&D to be amongst the leaders in industry introduction of the latest generation of process technology. Also, they will continue to invest in new production facilities. Production capacity should continue to increase proportionately with overall revenue growth, reaching well about 30% of total worldwide silicon IC wafer production by 2010. Silicon-based CMOS technology and more so will continue for quite a few more years yet. There are many opportunities for innovation in the large structures and materials. But IC manufacturers must work closely with equipment vendors to contain costs. The foundry of silicon CMOS technology platform also provides tremendous opportunities for nanotechnology innovations and business opportunities for the IC industry. Foundries will enjoy symbiotic and sustainable growth with the rest of the IC industry in the 21st century by collaboration with and virtually integration with product and system companies and with equipment and EVA suppliers to contain the cost of continuing progress. Next slide, please. By adopting the strategies we have outlined in the previous sections, we believe it is possible to propel growth in the foundry segment and so bolster overall IC industry growth. Evidence to support this assertion for foundry growth can be seen in the wafer production trends at TSMC. Despite the overall slowing of IC industry growth, wafer production rates at TSMC have increased with technology progression. As you can see here, the uh, uh, left side of uh, the graph is the newest generation, 45 nanometer, 65 nanometer, and 90 nanometers. And they have uh, ramped up faster to larger volumes than the previous generations. Next slide. To learn the importance of the boundary segment the IC industry as a whole will continue to increase. And the impact revenue for the foundry sector, which will rise to close to 40% by 2010. <coughs> Next slide. Foundries are now an integral part of the overall semiconductor supply chain, and there's every reason to anticipate that the importance of the foundry sector to the IC industry will increase further. Continued IC industry growth will deepen. Continued IC industry growth will depend on the sustained growth of the foundry sector. And here we have outlined the key strategies needed to propel this growth. We believe that foundries must expand into new CMOS logic IC product markets. But foundries must also penetrate segments of the IC market that are not currently involved in foundry relationships by broadening the range of technology that are offered. In the future, therefore, foundry leaders 
will provide an increasingly broad portfolio of CWAS reliant technologies, such as RF, mixed signal, high voltage, non volatile environment, and better DRAM, for example, concurrently with the design environment necessary to address issues in memory, analog, high performance logic, or image sensor applications. One of the most important elements of future foundry success will be the ability of the foundry company to create a much deeper and broader relationship with each of its customers. Ideally, the customer should view the foundry like its own technology team and its own time. The success of this relationship will require a much greater information flow between the design and the foundry team and a concurrent optimization of both design and process technology to be part of the requirements. Such relationships can offer a significant advantage to customers in meeting product costs, performance, and time to market requirements. Thank you very much. <laughs>